Hey, what's up guys welcome back and in this video we are going to see something new which just got released with flutter 2.5 do you know there's a new template actually which you get apart from your normal counter app there is a new template which you can use for your new flutter projects and it comes with some new improvements or you can say some something new okay which you haven't seen in the previous counter application so that's what we are going to explore obviously we are the one who always explores the new stuff right so uh, let's get into it i'm on my terminal right now and let's see first of all how we can get started with that particular template so what you have to do you will write normal flutter create command like you always do then we can just say dash t which means template and uh, the name of our template is skeleton okay and then we can uh, say let's say flutter 2.5 so this is a big name but just wanted to make sure that we are doing it right so it will take some time and it will create that template for me and we are here now so i'll just say flutter 2 dot five and cd I'll, i'm inside that and now i'll open it in my visual studio code editor and this is what i get with this guys so if you see this particular i'm like the list of directories there are some new files which you will see so first file which i can see over here is analysis options dot yaml file yes this is the linting file which you were waiting for so there is like already uh, predefined uh, rules which you get with the package called flutter lints so now we will also open pubspec.yml and inside that let's see what we get so what we get is something called flutter localization which is a new thing again uh, then we get flutter lints obviously which we just talked about so linting is actually very good when you set up a new project because it helps you a lot in writing better code um, then you have like you just say generate true so that you can enable the generation of all the localized strings okay from arb files don't worry about that and then you have normal assets but this time you have the assets already set up like uh, you can see we have an images folder there and uh, so there are a few interesting things in the assets let's start with that because that's our first folder in this list which we want to explore so in assets you will see we have a folder called images and inside images we have flutter logo.png which is by default 1x then we have a 2x folder where we have the same logo but the size will be a little bit bigger so this is 1x where we see this flutter logo this is not that big but if we see flutter logo 2.0 it's bigger than 1.0 and 3.0 x which will be bigger than 2.0 so that's how like the basics of this skeleton is to tell you that you know what should be the way of uh, using few things which which they could provide in this template like how you will um, kind of keep your images in assets folder so this is the way so like you will have 1x 2x 3x something like that right then you have um, there's also um, one localized yaml file which is we call it l10n so we have arb directory which is lib source localization we have the template file which is app underscore en dot arb and then the output localization file uh, if i want to see it uh, okay right now we are not generating anything but let's see if we open the lib folder and there are two things one is the main dot dot file which we get with counter application as well now there is something called src source folder as well inside that there are a lot of things one of which uh, we have a localization folder where we have this file which is the template arb file which is app underscore en dot arb and here you will find a json like structure where you will have keys and values so app title we have a value flutter 2.5 uh, then we have a title description where we just set the title of the application similarly you can have different uh, different keys and values and uh, this is for english so similarly you will create it for hindi and other languages so localization is basically to support multiple languages um, so which is probably a choice of today's application so that's what they are providing you here then we have another folder called sample feature which we will explore and then we have a settings folder and then we have app.dart and what i i would like to do is popspec.yml i'll just press flutter packages get so that we can just fix the errors which are coming so these are the new things uh, which you see outside the box 
when you just uh, write your flutter create t skeleton command now moving ahead uh, we will open main dot dart and here you will see what is the difference is that first of all the main method is now asynchronous why because we will be doing few things here and there so first thing is that it's uh, creating an instance of settings controller so what is settings controller is basically it will act as a glue which will attach your flutter widgets to your user settings okay so you will have a settings screen which you will just see and then uh, we load some settings using some preferences or anything like that right if let's say you are on a splash screen and you want to load something you will load it here and then you'll just uh, call that run app and just you provide my app as usual right so let's also see that how it looks right like uh, how this application looks because that's also very important that how it looks otherwise we won't be able to understand that what's actually happening but once you see the view of things then it will be very easy to understand what's happening and this is really a like set of good practice which they uh, really want to um conveyed using this particular template that what practice you should follow or how you should write code so that's what we can see here it will take a little bit time and then we will be able to see what we get with this particular thing so we got our x code build done in 24 seconds with this m1 mac which is cool so with flutter 2.5 we have also got support for native m1 uh, one more thing which i want to show you because we are using VS Code. So another feature which has been added uh, with my upcoming videos, you will see all the features by the way, but I'm just gonna show you that if you press Command Shift P and uh, if you say add dependency, then you can see we have apart from PubSpec Assist, which is an external extension of VS Code, we directly get dot add dependency, which you can click and once you click you can see all the packages over here for example if i want to search my package i say velocity x and i can see it and if i press enter it adds that package uh it will just add it i guess it will take a little moment and 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 and, and where it is and you can see it is being added right and that's that's what you can do so now our app is there let's see and this is the app which we get okay so this is a sample items app. It's a two screen app, unlike counter application, which is a one screen app. So here you get sample item one, two, three, basically there's a list view, which we are using. And if I click any of the item, it opens a details page where we don't have that much information, but it says that more information here. But although we don't have any information here, but yeah, I mean, you got the idea, right? And similarly, if you open any of these items, the same screen will appear. And there's also a, in an interesting settings icon. What it does, let's see. So setting icon has this theme changer, a drop down basically, and the spinner. Uh, so you can just say dark theme, for example, and it changes to dark theme. So are they using any state management or using just set state or something better, maybe change notifier. Let's see that. Okay, so um, now let's come back to the code. We see first of all, there is a settings controller. So what, as I told you, it acts as a glue to attach your Flutter widgets to your settings, um, which we will see. So settings and controller, let's open it, right? And then we'll see what it gets. So settings controller is using change notifier, of course, you know, as a mix in. Um, so um, what else is there, right? So we can see something called settings service. So basically you can use this setting service to um, maybe you know write code like shared preference where you can load your settings and all those kind of things. So setting services is basically uh, to write backend logic or maybe um, you can write your shared preference logic or something like that. You have theme mode which will be either system light or dark which we have already seen. This is These are by default private so that it cannot be used directly. Then you have theme mode obviously uh, as a getter so that you can get that uh, particular theme. Then load settings as I told you, it will do the same thing. And then there is something on notify listeners because we are using change notifier. So we have to notify about the changes, right? So that's how we use it. And then we have update theme mode, which is nothing but again the same thing when you have to update a new theme, okay? So that's what is happening. Now also let's open setting service. So as you can see, setting service has nothing actually. It just has a theme mode, which is an asynchronous method. And then you have an update theme mode, which is not doing anything as of now. Then how 
this thing is working, right? You might be wondering what is exactly happening? It, they, are we using set state or not? Okay, we are not using set state. Let's go into the details of it. So there's a my application where we are using settings. We are passing settings controller. So let's open my app, which is this app.dart file. And there we get app localization.dart, which is which file does not exist as of now, but that's fine. Okay, so uh, this is using null safe free, of course. So that's why you see this question mark here and there, or the late keyword and all of that. Now, what we see in this my app is basically material app, which we are used to see uh, all phase. Like, you know, whenever you create an app, most of the time you'll see material app, maybe Cupertino app, widgets app as well. There is something called restoration scope ID, which is basically nothing but once your app gets killed in the background, and if you re uh, want to restore the navigation stack in this particular scenario where you are using material app, then you can use restoration scope ID. Similarly, for example, if you are using a list view and you want to restore the scroll position, then there is also a restoration ID which you can provide. So this is something which just got uh, announced with Flutter 2.0. Uh, it's a still, uh, it was still in beta kind of, but I mean, yeah, I mean, this is something which being done for most of the widgets. So this is some interesting. Then you have localization delegates where you will specify your app localization. Then you'll also specify the material Qpert, you know, and widgets like all the applications which you use like material app widgets app Qpert, you know, app so delegates for all of them. Then what locales you support? For example, right now we are supporting only English. There is no country specified. Similarly, we can have like, for example, if I want to support something like India, so I can just say HI and maybe IN, something like this. And then uh, I'll add that file as well, like ARBEN, then I'll be having app underscore dot not ARBEN, app underscore EN dot ARB. So I'll have app underscore HI dot ARB for Hindi, something like that, right? And then you have on generate title and we just check like this is how we will get all the data from the app localization file that app localization dot off dot app title something like that so app title is there so if we go inside this file is not still there we have to generate it but if you see this there you will find app title which we get here right so this is what we have uh, we have a generator which we can use but let's avoid it for now um, then theme is basically using theme data which is fine dark theme theme data dot dark Nothing usual here. Theme mode, we are using settings controller dot theme mode, right? And how we are getting settings controller, we are actually wrapping our material app with this animator builder. Okay. Uh, I'll ask you one question uh, just after a moment. Let's also see on generate route, which is having route settings and we are just returning a material page route. So we just check the route settings dot name and based on that, like it's a switch case. Uh, if we have settings view dot route name, we get we show settings view. Otherwise, if we have item details view dot route name, that we these are static strings basically nothing else. And then we have list view, and default is also this list view, which we'll just explore. But before that, um, you see this is our application which we get right. If I remove this animated builder, right, because we are not performing any animation as such using this animated builder. So what? will happen if I remove this animated builder. Will this theme change will work or not? So the answer is actually it won't because this is actually helping us, you know, to whenever there is a theme change using settings controller. So it notifies us. So there is a change in settings controller and this animator builder helps us in listening to that change. That's why we are not using set state anywhere. So that's the thing. If you remove it, let's try and removing it, right? If you really want to play with it. So what we can do is we can just remove this line of code and uh, let's remove this line of code. And if we do a hot restart and if we go back here, you will see this thing, this will work. Everything will work, but settings controller will not work. And if I try to click here and if I click light theme, nothing happens, dark theme, nothing happens. So that's the change which you can see. Okay, I'm taking a little bit more time just want to explain you what exactly is happening. 
Now let's go back to a uh, sample list item list view, which we show here, this list, which we are talking about here. It's again a stateless widget. Nothing usual is happening like, uh, like, like nothing fancy here. Uh, we have an icon button and again, because we are using restoration ID. So that's why we are using restorable push named so that, you know, we can uh, restore the navigation stack. And uh, similarly, we have list view dot builder and see this is this is what i was talking about we have a restoration id here as well so again if your app gets killed in the background and if user returns then he can actually go back to the same scroll position so that's the idea and here also we are using the same restorable push named and apart from that nothing else is there let's say sample item detail view is very simple uh, screen nothing fancy there and uh, yeah, I mean, that's more or less it. And sample item is just a simple class with an ID, nothing else. So this is what we get guys with uh, our default skeleton, this new skeleton template, which we get with Flutter in Flutter 2.5. And yes, there is a lot to explain. So that's what I did. If you enjoyed my explanation, press the like button. If you want to see more videos regarding Flutter 2.5 or anything else, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to make those videos. So don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon for future updates of this channel. Bye-bye. See you in the next video.